Grace God, we welcome you to our teaching on parenting and uh, we continue from where we left last week. My name is Reverend Jackson Wanga and I welcome you into this essential topic for us young parents that we need to grasp on how to bring up our children in the best way possible. Today I'm talking about conscious. Last week we dealt with how to discern what is right and what is wrong in the behavior so that as we bring up our children, we bring them up in the right behavior. And therefore today we are dealing with the conscious and Psalms 119 verse 11 says, Your word have I laid up in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Conscious is, is not a state of consciousness, nor it is not a state of unconsciousness, but a God-given moral faculty given to a man. It is that portion of our human humanness that receives and reflects values and, present, and, and presenting what the mind sees as morally right and wrong, or morally good and evil. How does conscience work? There are two types of conscious. One is primary conscious, and two is moral conscious. Primary conscious is the law and common to all persons, knowing what is right and what is wrong. It is untrained, it is a pre knowledge given by God. This portion reflects an awareness that God exists, that truth comes from God, that righteousness comes from the truth, and that judgment be according to the righteousness revealed. Nobody will thus be able to claim ignorance as Romans chapter 1 verse 18 to 20 states. Second one, which is moral conscience. This is a higher level of knowing what is wrong, what is right and what is wrong. This is the trainable portion of the conscious. Parents need to remember how easy it is to waken the conscious or wrongly train it. A child's conscience can be insensitive, hardened, or uncaring. It is therefore important what truth is imparted to the child and how it is imparted to the child. For healthy conscience development, you need the word of God and a godly example. The primary conscience does provide the inborn sense of right and wrong, while the conscience provides the land standard of right and wrong. And we need to apply the law to the standards governing the heart. But I tell you, that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Do not bring the standard to the child, but rather bring the child to the standard. Obviously, if the moral values and standards do not come from the Bible, your child's heart will not be Christian. We as parents need to to concentrate on, 
on our children's moral cultures by five points that I want to highlight and discuss on. Point number one, by establishing a moral warehouse, making our brain is the warehouse. Your word have I laid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The storehouse is their hearts where moral knowledge, various values and character qualities are stored in to be used later. The heart can receive, store and govern instruction. Management rights belong to the parents initially to, to ensure that this is fulfilled in the lives of our children. He has showed you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That is from Micah chapter 6 verse 8. In the early years of life, the heart, which is the storehouse of your child, is like, a, is like, is like a clean slate regarding moral content. When virtues such as honesty, respect, fairness, wisdom, gentleness, and patience are in his heart, the conscience can begin to do its work. Moral knowledge alone does not guarantee moral conduct. Many other factors influence human behavior. Churches are filled with knowledgeable children who are wayward. Moral instruction is the east part, teaching a child to control his behavior and to conform to moral principles is much difficult. If a child does not know in, in self-control, he will always have a conflict between knowing what is right and doing what is right. If, if, if self-control is not attained, the result will be a child who is moral on the outside and not on the inside. Both knowledge and behavior need to be a conviction. Point number two, using the activities of conscience. Conscience has the ability to assess behavior and form an opinion. Since, like Romans chapter 2 verse 15, since they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their conscience also bears witness and their thoughts or alternatively accusing or else defending them. Negative use, it warns that God's standard was violated and accuses you of being guilty. For example, David numbered the people and felt guilty in Second Corinthians, in Second Samuel, chapter ten. Untrained sin causes a hardened conscience. Pervasive parenting causes, sorry, permissive parenting causes a lack of causes a lack of guilty due to the absence of value and standards. Positive use, it prompts us to do right and it confirms that we do right when we are doing right. Confirmation brings affirmation to anybody who, do, who does right. And confirmation opposes guilt. There is a deep and inner satisfaction when you do what pleases God. And therefore, we need to understand which values we instill in our children so that they, may, they will know what is good and wrong as they grow up. Point number three, 
activating the moral search mechanism. The moral conscience has an ability to make moral assessments with God's value inside the warehouse. The conscience becomes like a radar, guiding us to a moral certainty, encouraging us towards the right direction, and warning us when possible wrong can happen. The conscious is like an alert button, warning us to respond correctly to moral situations. While shopping, attending school, watching TV, driving a car, or whatever we do, we are constantly being confronted to make a moral response during each activity. To such mechanism takes a takes in data, evaluates it morally, and decides on a response taken from values in the warehouse. If a suitable or corresponding value is found in the scanning process, it activates a warning or prompting signal to choose the moral solution. Imagine if no suitable value is found in the warehouse for the situation. The scanning ends and no decision is made. If there is no principle to stir the heart, the heart will not be stirred up because nothing was found in. When, for example, when an elderly person enters a crowded waiting room, would you get up and make a seat available for him? Or you will say, I came early, so the seat is mine. Let the elderly person remain standing. This is caused by the value we instill into our children. Our children will respect elderly people. When they come in, they will wake up and give them the seats to sit on. In Leviticus 19, Verse that to you shall rise up before the gray headed and honor the presence of an elder, old, and an older man and fear your God. That is what the Bible instructs us. But today, do we see these values? Because we threw these values to the dustbin. So our children have lost values that they should be carrying today. Point number four. Training children to, to, have, to have both a positive and negative conscious. Human conscious develops by having both positive and negative conscious training. Negative training should be used primarily during the early years. It, it includes restriction, encouragement, and reinforcement of values which you call as or oh, yes of values and assertive conscience be careful not to concentrate on one side only because it may cause unhealthy growth the transition process starts from about the third year of a child's life this involves motivating the child from the fear of the lord and the love of virtue. As we deposit these values and virtues into the child's moral warehouse, we encourage them to take ownership of the values they have stored up in their, where, in their warehouse. Only when will you have a moral responsibility child, when you store up your values in your warehouse so that every time you scan into a warehouse the moral values comes up and the virtues the process starts like this with a clear biblical standard set in the heart of our children that is where the beginning is parental example that you live a life of example you are not a parent by virtue of having carried a baby 
or fathered our, our baby. But it is by you living by example, a tr and a trusting relationship. It's also parental honesty and family love and many more relational elements that are needed in us to ensure that we instill into our children positive and conscious. The focus shifts from knowing what the child shouldn't do to what the child should be doing as the heart or warehouse fills up with biblical virtues, the child moves into ultimate freedom, the ability to govern their own behavior from within according to divine standards of personal government. However, I want to give a warning. Success in negative training through consciousness and restrictions often, often tempts parents not to move into the transition phase of explaining and allowing their child to be governed by within. This leaves the child doubtful as far as right or wrong is concerned. When we keep on warning and restricting and pushing things and threatening to our children, then we lose the right direction of instilling into their warehouse what should be done. And the fifth point is developing a prohibitive and assertive conscience. A prohibitive conscience says, I must or else I will be punished. With the potential of always being on the verge of doing wrong. It is a motivated out of fear of punishment of re or reproof. An assertive conscience, on the other hand, says, I ought to because it is right, or I ought not to because it is wrong. Because it is wrong, and the child develops a health conscious with encouragement to do what is right. Rather than always discouraging wrong behavior, parents modeling these qualities will cause obedience to become more attractive to these children. A child develops prohibitive conscious when one, Parents manipulate the child through fear of losing their love. Two, parents manipulate the conscious through guilty. And three, parents don't explain moral reasons why. And because of this, this they develop prohibitive conscious in the lives of their children. A person who lives with fear of potential guilt is always afraid of rejection through wrong decisions and does not live from a pure heart. And these are the children you realize that they know something but they cannot say it because they are scared of saying it because they feel like it is wrong. So they keep on doubting their mind because they were brought up with prohibitive assert, uh, con uh, 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 conscious. Therefore, parents who use these methods use need to know that one, it is an easy way to get control. It is just like a dictator, the best way of getting control. It is a less and cruel and inhuman way of parenting. And imagine as you do this to your children, you are showing, you are telling them that this is the way you want to live the rest of your life, and this is the same way you need to impart into your life, the, into the lives of your children. And lastly, it is, it is the effects. The effects are lifelong. Just what I have said, 
because you have instilled in these children all these things, they will live as scared of making decision, of taking step in their lives, because they know that everything they will say, it will be wrong, and everything that is wrong, it comes with punishment. So we need to be careful in, in how we bring up our children. And we should bring up our children in the best way possible. I want to encourage you again to join me next time as we shall be talking about testing to understand your own heart. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that may this word find a space in the hearts of parents and that may young parents understand that they need to bring up children. Number one, using the primary conscious and moral conscious, so that their children may grow knowing what is right and wrong, and building them into their, store, into their warehouse, so that whether parents are there or not, they will do what is right. And when they do what is wrong, they will acknowledge. May God bless us, as we go through this, for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.